So here's my dining room table in the box pleated tablecloth. And I'll bring you in a little closer and you'll see that on this one section, I put that banding on there and then I have not yet banded the rest of the table because I couldn't decide if I wanted to do that banding or not because I thought maybe I wanted to use this tablecloth for longer than Thanksgiving, but um, I probably won't because this table is actually a 54 inch table and I really need a 60. Here is my box pleated tablecloth. This is what I'm gonna show you how to make. When you're making a tablecloth, or if you were to do a box pleat like, let's say, on a chair, a Parsons style chair, or a chair like this, you would want your pleats to be separate pieces, like this. These panels here are just, you know, individual panels. When you would make a box pleat on a drapery, the drapery panel would be all one piece of fabric. This is a, called a kick pleat, because when you're sitting at the table, you need to be able to push your chair in and have your feet be able to move freely here. If this was all one piece of fabric, it would be because the fabric only folds back to about here and here, this would be too tight to actually push your chair into and sit at the table. It would restrict that movement. And same with a chair. If you do all one piece on a chair, what's going to happen is, is you won't be able to put your feet back when you're sitting at the chair. Your feet will hit the front of that. It'll be like a trampoline. It'll be too tight. Or it will be, what'll happen is your pleat will just always stay open on the corners. It'll just flare out your pleat and your pleat will never hang nicely if you don't do a kick pleat like this. Anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to make this box pleated tablecloth. One more just quick point that I wanted to make on this. This is actually a drop cloth. I made this out of a drop cloth because this is just for Thanksgiving and this is a 54 inch table that I got for free off of Craigslist because I wanted to see if we could use a 54 inch table. I always had a 60 inch table here and 60 is perfect for us because we can fit eight chairs around it comfortably and even 10 chairs when we need to. So I, since this was free, I uh, grabbed it because I thought, well, maybe a 54 inch table would make more sense here, but it turns out I do need a 60 inch. So that's why I made this out of drop cloth because it's going to be fairly temporary. I will probably end up just giving this table away and um, so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on fabric for a table that I probably won't keep. I'm not even sure this will make it through Thanksgiving, to tell you the truth. Um, depending upon how much time I have before Thanksgiving, I might pull out my 60-inch table. I have a folding 60-inch table that I bought at Sam's Club. I've used it for probably 20 years. And I've always had a tablecloth, a floor-length tablecloth on it, obviously. Um, but I am kind of looking for an, a nice nice 60 inch wood table that I don't need to have a tablecloth on all the time. So anyway, that's why I used a drop cloth. And if you are a beginner and you're just learning to sew or you haven't done this type of thing, drop cloth is a really great place to start because it's so inexpensive. And if you mess it up or if you don't finish it, no big loss. This cost me $20. It was $9.99 for each, each nine by 12 tablecloth and I bought two. So. So the first step is to cut out all your pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to cut your round circle for your tablecloth. This is the way to do it. And I do have another tutorial where I do show this process in full size. I made a tablecloth for my 60 inch table and I did that full size. So I'll link to that here. And I am gonna show you this small because it's easier to get an overall picture of this process because you can see the whole thing in one, one camera view. So this would be your fabric. This would be a selvage and this would be a selvage. So let's say you've got a piece of fabric here that is 54 inches wide and this is two yards, so like 72 or so, so inches. What you're gonna do is you are going to fold your fabric in half and then you're going to fold it in half again selvage to selvage so after you've got your fabric all folded there's two ways you could go about drawing your circle on here um, the first way is to put a pin in the very tip of your piece of paper where your four intersection fold is so you see that like that you put your pin there and then you're gonna take a piece of string and tie that to this 
tie your pencil to the other end and then pull that out and draw your your circle I actually like to just go ahead and use my tape measure and put your pin or your thumbtack in the very end of it through the tape measure and through your fabric and then at the point wherever it is that you've measured so if your uh, circle needs to be 60 inches because your table is a 60 inch diameter so let's say you need 60 inches plus you need a half an inch for your seam allowance so 60 and a half inches so that means you're going to measure out 30 and a quarter inches out so we'll pretend that this is the 30 and a quarter obviously this is tiny piece of paper so i put a hole in my tape measure just large enough for my pencil and you're just gonna follow follow that around okay so there's my pencil mark it's a perfect quarter of a circle cut that out okay so you fit you cut that out and then open that baby up and you have a perfect circle for your tabletop and that'll work every time so the next pieces to cut are the boxing pieces okay so I've got my fabric laid out. I've got two layers here, so I'm gonna cut two at one time. And I'm cutting it 32 inches length, and then the width will be 38 inches. So right now I'm cutting the 32 dimension. And I'm just using my scissors because I'm a little bit longer there than my cutting mat. And I've got a large piece of fabric, so it's just easier for me at this point to cut with my scissors. Now that I'm on my cutting mat, I will go ahead and cut these square with my rotary cutter and my ruler. Okay, so now I need to cut my width to 39 inches, I mean 38 inches, so I'm gonna line this up to the nine, and I'll cut on the one inch mark over here because it's just easier than trying to cut on the zero mark. Now I've got 38 by 32. So, and this edge is not great. As you can see, that's a bad cut there, but and I should have cut that off, but I didn't. So I'll have to work that into the hem. Okay, so now I can take, so I've got two pieces. I need to cut one more to get around my whole table skirt. So I'll go ahead and take these to the ironing. Okay, now for the skirt. So for this project, I decided to use hem tape for the side seams and also the bottom hem because I don't want to have seam lines on my skirt. If I was going to use this tablecloth a lot and like on a regular basis, on a daily basis and need to wash it frequently, I would put a blind hem in here. But since this is just for Thanksgiving and I will probably only have to wash this a couple times a year. So I, that's why I decided to just use hem tape and because uh, it's it's just so easy and for a beginner sewer or somebody who doesn't know how to sew you can still do this project if you use hem tape on all this part then all your sewing is just the pleats to the circle part so that's pretty simple okay so there's the hem tape in there and then you just press it and then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side and then on the bottom hem and then I will take this and sew it to the round tabletop. So now I've got to just put in all my side seams and my bottom hems on all five of my skirt pieces, which should be pretty simple because I've got them all cut and they're all exactly the same size. So now I just need to I, I measured so I have a double one inch side hem on each of my box skirt pieces and then a two inch bottom hem. So I just iron them all exactly the same, one inch on the sides and then the bottom hem, which you want to put the bottom hem in first on the side pieces. Then we go to the table and attach these to the circle. 
So the important thing to remember when you're pinning your side panels onto your circular tabletop piece is to make sure that you're lined up between the two panel, the two boxes or pleats really make sure that these are lined up the same because you don't want it to to uh, hit the floor like this so that's important when you're pinning on the box part to your circle this one's already sewn on and i'm pinning this one on now i'm going to go ahead and continue to pin this around this circle so since I cut all my pieces the same and put in the same exact hem allowance, I can just go ahead and match up my raw edges on my circle center piece, tabletop piece, as well as the uh, boxing skirt pieces. Just match up those raw edges and pin them. And um, obviously pin right side to right side and just go all the way around. Okay, and then the next one, I'll pin that on all the way around, and then we'll go ahead and put the pieces in between here to close up that pleat. So now I'm sewing the skirting, the box pieces of my skirting onto my round tabletop that I just pinned. So I'm just gonna sew all the way around with my half inch seam allowance, which is what I gave uh, allowance for. You could do that whatever size you desire, half inch, five eighths, whatever you normally do. And then after all this is sewn on, then I will sew in the nine inch uh, center pieces that will close up the box on the, on the skirt. Okay, so now I am going to cut the small pieces that I'm going to put in between the two pleats on the table skirt. So um, I have this piece, I've already put a hem in it. I need five pieces. So I think I'm going to do, this is 45, so I think I'm going to do nine inches a piece. Let me see if that's going to be enough. Yeah, that should be enough. So I'll cut this into nine inch strips. Nine. 18, 27, 36, and 45. Okay, so now I just have to sew these in between the two boxes. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Here it is. Okay, so this is the underside, obviously. You can see the hem there. All right, so there's the pleat. And, oh, you know what I've gotta do? I've gotta go serge the edges. So with each of these nine inch pieces, what I'm gonna do is just serge the edges. If you don't have a serger, you can just zigzag those edges. There's really no reason to put a hem in this because it won't be seen and it will just make for more bulk at the top when you're sewing it in to have a hem there. You could put a hem on it, but I'm just gonna serge down both sides. So let me do that and then we'll sew in the piece. All right, so here we are at my serger. I'm just gonna serge down both edges and I always like to cut off just a hair to guarantee that my needles are, my stitches are deep enough into my fabric. If you're not gonna cut off any, your stitches might come out a little bit too far and end up looping up, so. Make sure you sew off the edge so you have a nice long tail there. There's my nice serged edge all the way down. So we'll go sew that onto the tablecloth. So the last step is just to sew those nine inch pieces behind your pleats and press your tablecloth and you're all finished.